It takes more than 100 tiny glass flowers to make just one of these $5,000 paperweights. And at the oldest crystal factory in France, only a few people even know how. Saint Louis' pieces were once a mainstay of French palaces in the 19th century. But many furnaces like this one shut down when cheaper glass alternatives became widely available. Saint Louis managed to survive by leaning into the kind of luxury products that are rare these days. Crystal vases, chandeliers, and yes, even paperweights. We went to France to see how, after nearly half a millennium, this factory is still standing. Fewer than 10 people know the exact recipe for Saint Louis crystal. Most of the ingredients are the same used to make glass. Sand, limestone, potassium carbonate, and sodium carbonate. Lead is what makes crystal clearer, stronger, and easier to carve. It all starts with a molten mix that burns at 1,450 degrees Celsius inside this furnace. Artisans have no more than two minutes to shape a piece before it hardens. Glass blowing was invented in the first century BC in ancient Syria. Saint Louis still uses many of the methods from back then, like blowing into molds to shape a piece. The factory has crafted over 12,000 of them. C'est des moules qui existent depuis des années, je sais pas, peut-être 50, 60. Donc c'est toujours les mêmes moules là. For some pieces, they measure the size, shape and thickness by eye. At this point, the crystal's temperature needs to be between 900 and 1100 degrees Celsius. If it cools too fast, it could shatter. San Luis team of 60 glass blowers can make over a thousand pieces in a single day. And most were trained in the factory. Les gestes sont difficiles. Il faut compter 10 ans pour euh, un bon souffleur. Paperweights are the crown jewel of San Luis. Nowadays, only five artisans know how to make them, and it can take two months to complete just one. It starts with an ancient technique called Mille Fiori, which is Italian for a thousand flowers. Artisans stretch molten glass flower designs until they are thin as a pencil. Then they cut it into tiny pieces. One by one, workers sort them into a mold, then fill it with molten crystal. A final crystal layer will create a three-dimensional effect. Artisans add the final decorations by hand. While its paperweights gained popularity in the 1950s, the factory had been making crystal tableware for 200 years. Making a single wine glass is a team effort. Workers pour molten crystal into a press to form the stem. Joining the two pieces together is the most difficult part. The cup needs to be hot and soft enough to attach. These torches help keep the crystal hot. Then, two artisans work together to pour in just the right amount of crystal to make the base. They have seconds to roll it before it hardens and any wrong move could damage the shape. Once they cool, some pieces go to the cold workshop where artisans will carve, cut and decorate them. Christoph Schneider starts off by drawing the design on the surface. Then he picks his wheels. The factory has at least 100 of them. Si, uh, 
On ne choisit pas la bonne meule, on risque de percer. On risque de tailler trop loin. Today, he's working on highball glass from the Tommy collection. They were designed after World War I to pay tribute to English soldiers who were nicknamed Tommies. Just one can cost $450. C'est la, la collection qui est le, le plus significative de Saint-Louis, en fait. C'est un peu le, la marque de fabrique. It's one of the most complex pieces, requiring around 120 cuts. Des techniques qui sont plus simples à apprendre que d'autres. Et au bout d'un moment, ça devient, ça devient mécanique et on, a, on sait où on va, on sait ce qu'on fait. Et ça devient presque automatique. Christophe has been working at Saint Louis for two years, but he's been around the art for most of his life. Mes deux grands-pères ont travaillé ici. Mon frère travaille ici actuellement. C'est là que j'ai un peu découvert Saint Louis en fait. Je me suis dit le meilleur moyen de savoir comment c'est fait, c'est d'aller les faire moi-même. He can finish a glass in about one hour. Filing the bottom is the finishing touch. L'objectif c'est d'enlever la couleur en fait au fond du verre pour que ça soit transparent. But other pieces like chandeliers can take three months to complete. They've been a staple of Saint Louis since France's royal court commissioned the factory to make one in 1837. One chandelier can cost over $40,000. But over the years, Saint Louis has expanded its lighting department to include more than just these elaborate pieces. About half of the factory's sales come from selling smaller lighting fixtures like sconces and lamps. Crystal has been a symbol of luxury since it was invented in England in the 17th century. But Saint Louis actually started off much earlier as a glass factory back in 1586. 200 years later, glassmakers here accidentally created crystal while trying to make colored glass using lead. At its peak in the early 20th century, Saint Louis produced pieces for the most prestigious clients in Europe, including Queen Elizabeth II and the Palace of Versailles. By the mid 20th century, people up and down the social ladder considered it a must have gift for special occasions like weddings. But things started to change in the 1960s when cheaper alternatives entered the market. Customers across the world started embracing more casual glassware. Many traditional glass and crystal factories struggled to compete. Saint Louis says sales reached an all time low in the 1980s and 90s as it struggled to find young customers. The factory was about to be sold to American investors when the French luxury brand Hermès bought it in 1995. Their CEO fell in love with Saint Louis' history and wanted to keep it French. Hermès poured investment money into the business, giving Saint Louis time to develop new marketing strategies and to find new clients. The glassmakers found success in one of the most surprising markets of all, paperweights. Saint Louis discovered a niche network of collectors who would pay thousands for them. It's why it launched an annual limited edition collection based on the Chinese zodiac. The latest creation, honoring the year of the rabbit, costs $4,200. That's a third of the price of its more intricate paperweights, which can go for up to $13,000. Today, they have buyers in Europe, China, and North America. Saint Louis also updated some of its tools and equipment, like replacing wood furnaces for gas powered ones. Si les verriers de 1586 voyaient la manière dont travaille le cristal, peut-être de nos jours, euh, seraient peut-être effrayés, euh, plus qu'heureux. But one thing that remains is the human touch. Every piece in the factory still goes through a thorough, hands-on quality inspection. That's Clément Miskler's job. Là, on va chercher euh, principalement des, des défauts euh, engendrés par euh, la taille. Donc, ça peut être des, des problèmes de, de croûte, d'état de, de surface euh, pas clair, par exemple. 
Euh, on regarde aussi s'il reste euh, des petites bulles, des petites pierres. While we may not see anything, a trained eye can spot defects in seconds. Only half the pieces will pass Clément's inspection. Certaines, on peut les réparer, c'est-à-dire on les, on les note avec un feutre. Les pièces sont ensuite renvoyées en taillerie, elles sont réparées et euh, recontrôlées ensuite. Every piece is coated with a special solution as an extra precaution to prevent lead from leaking. Lead contamination from crystal is extremely rare, but studies have found that small amounts of lead could leak into alcohol when it's stored in crystal decanters for extended periods of time. In the 1990s and early 2000s, the US and Canada issued warnings about lead contamination from crystal glass. Factories began voluntarily limiting the amount of lead in their crystal to 24%. Today, all Saint Louis employees undergo monthly health checks and wear protective gear when handling lead. Une histoire sur 300 ans, c'est pas linéaire, c'est pas uh, toujours la même. Au contraire, elle a justement uh, uh, tous ces rebondissements qui sont très intéressants et qui font sa particularité. 100 years ago. Only nobility and the wealthy could afford to buy Saint Louis pieces. Today, they're sold around the world to hotels, cultural institutions, restaurants, and private collectors. Donc, travailler ici, c'est comme euh, perpétrer une histoire euh, centenaire, quoi. Qui a bientôt euh, 500 ans. C'est un honneur de pouvoir faire les... ces, ces pièces-là. C'est une fierté parce que euh, on les voit partout et on, on sait d'où elles viennent. Donc. Euh, Quand on en voit une, on peut se demander est-ce que c'est nous qui l'avons faite. The focus today is preserving the knowledge for generations to come. J'ai pas de boule de cristal justement, je sais pas lire l'avenir, mais tout ce qui reste à venir euh, pour la maison Saint-Louis, les cristal et les autres cristalleries et ouverries, je pense qu'effectivement on a encore euh, de belles choses à écrire.